Hi everybody. Welcome back. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing amazing. Um, it's the weekend um, when I'm shooting this. And yesterday I was playing a gig with my good friend Chrysanthi, who you might know from some videos that you really like. I'm gonna put one up there. And I woke up today despite sleeping quite late uh, in the morning around 9.30 and it's a very sunny day and I went outside, I grabbed some coffee and there's just been a very general feeling of, you know, and of course the cat is trying to climb in the video, do her the honors of including her. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so today there's been a general feeling of, like, calmness and, I don't know, just feel a bit tired chillness that we feel sometimes. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Um, so I decided to honor the chillness of the day and just talk about some books that I like and maybe read a few passages from each one and um, I'm not keeping her by the way, she's here by her own volition she's so cute though, what am I gonna do? Um, yeah, so today's video I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I like and have liked and have read and um, I'm gonna read a little bit from them and we're just gonna relax and maybe my kind of coarse soft-spoken voice will help you relax a little bit more <laughs> stop don't do that you want to stay stay but calm down So, I would like to start, they're not going to be too many, um, I didn't put them in any order, so I'm just going to pick them up as I stack them, and, um, The first book that I have is Cujo by uh, Stephen King. Stephen King is one of my favorite authors and um, he's one of the first writers that I read. Um, of course I was reading children books and stuff but um, I was around 10 or 11 where I, when I came in contact with Stephen King. I remember there was a bookcase in my home growing up and there was a bottom shelf with like a row of six Stephen King books because my dad was a fan and it is a fan um, so I had asked to read the books or if I could read one of them and I was told no you're too young for these books and I don't know why um, but I, I blame it on being a curious child and also being really into horror in a very weird way I would like sneak the book and read them when they weren't around or you know in the room or whatever um, and the first book of Stephen King I actually read was um, Dolores Cleburne which was it's still pretty heavy it's a Stephen King book and it was around 11 I think but or 12 um, but it was just glorious and then the second game I um the second book I read right after I finished it in the same age was Gerald's Game um, which is a little bit more unsettling but anyway um, this is Cujo I love this book what I love about Stephen King is that he has the ability to take a minor thing like 
almost random or insignificant, you know, a dog, a woman stuck somewhere, um, I don't know, a car, and just create this whole tension and a whole other world from it, like, this book is about so much more than, you know, just a rabid dog, and just the tension it builds and the emotion it, like, it creates, I... Honestly, if you have any other author, let me know, but Stephen King is the only, I think, author that has the ability to just take something um, for me and, like, keep me on my seat. Like, I, I cry in his books, you know, it feels like it's so tense and it's just, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant. Um... Like, I remember reading the end, and I was like, no way, no way, no way. It was anxious, like, it was holding my breath, and I was like, oh my god, of course, I'm not going to spoil it, but, um, anyway, I just highly recommend it. I'm going to read a random passage. He looked around, breathing hard, as if he had just run a race. And suddenly, he went after the room as if it were something alive, something that had hurt him badly and needed to be punished, as if it were the room that had caused his pain. He pushed over Vic's lazy boy's recliner. He upened the couch. It stood on end for a moment, rocking uneasily, and then went down with a crash, breaking the back of the coffee table which had stood in front of it. He pulled all of the books out of the bookcases, cursing the shitty taste of people who had bought them under his breath as he did it. He picked up the magazine stand and threw it over, handed the mirror over the mantelpiece, shattering it. Big pieces of black back mirror fell onto the floor like chunks of a jigsaw puzzle. He was snorting now, like a bull in heat. His thin cheeks were almost purple with color. Okay, so the next book that we have This is called um, Love is a Dog from Hell It's uh, Charles Bukowski and this specific one, I think, is just a collection of some of his work. Um, there's mostly poems inside. And I think maybe like a really short um, story. And Charles Bukowski is just another writer that I really enjoy. I particularly enjoyed him at a point in my life where... A lot of things just felt a little bit darker and a little bit more heavy, as they do when you're younger. But I just resonated a lot with some of his, um, let's say, hopeless sentiments about things. But at the same time, I found him incredibly hopeful in his um, in certain parts of how he perceived love and romance and. Uh, Anyway, I really like them. Uh, of course, some of the things he says, he said and wrote are dated now. Um, same as it would know with Stephen King as well, but I'm gonna read some parts. I like to underline my books. I know a lot of people hate that, but I really enjoy it because things are supposed to be lived in, you know, after we're gone. Or whatever, if we gift something to someone, they could open it and read something that we've underlined and they're gonna know that this meant something to us and I really value that sentiment. So I'm just gonna pick a few random underlined pieces. Again, I haven't like practiced this or anything. This is from Eat Your Heart Out in the Underlined. I've come by, she says. To tell you that this is it. I'm not kidding. It's over. This is it. This is it, she says. Eat your heart out. <laughs> and then, 
There is always one woman to save you from another. And as the woman saves you, she makes ready to destroy. Let's see. I love this one. There is a loneliness in this world so great that you can see it in the slow movement of the hands of a clock. People so tired, mutilated, either by love or no love. People just are not good to each other, one on one. The rich are not good to the rich. The poor are not good to the poor. We are afraid. Our educational system tells us that we can all be big winners. It hasn't told us about the gutters or the terror of one person aching in one place, alone, untouched, unspoken to, watering a plant. People are not good to each other. Something more positive. She has hurt fewer people than anybody I know. And if you look at it like that, well, she has created a better world. She has won. Francis, this poem is for you. That was really nice. Okay, and the next book. is Candy. Um, this is also a movie, Candy, with um, Heath Ledger and Abby Cornish, I think. Oh, it says it right here. And I'd first seen the movie and then the book. Uh, it came to me by a random exchange. Someone had given it to someone and then someone had won it and it ended up in my hands. And anyway, I think it's a fantastic book and very, very sad. Again, um, I don't have a habit of reading just sad things. I don't know why I picked them for this video. Um, it's about a couple that uh, they fall in love, madly in love. And they both have a problem with substance abuse and it's really, really sad, very tragic. Um, I mean, that's not for everybody, the book and the movie, but they are, they're beautiful stories. Um, and I still have underlined a few things. I'm pretty sure they were again about like something about love and, um, um, but I'll try to find something to read out. Um, deep in my heart, it was inconceivable that we would ever separate. Yeah. Well, this was what love was, for better or for worse. And I feel something a little more cheerful underlined. So why are you smiling? She asked. And all I could say with a heart full of hope was, I have no idea in the wide world. It was a good enough starting point. And the next book, Called Choke. It's by, oh, I'm not gonna say that right. It's by Chuck Palenik. Palenik? He's the author of Fight Club. You might know Fight Club from the movie, 
which is an incredible movie, I might add, in my personal opinion. Choke um, is, I would say, similar in the soci social, philosophical, or personal questions and subjects it likes to touch. It is about how we are and exist or defy society. It says, Victor Mancini, a medical school dropout, is an anti-hero for our deranged times. Needing to pay elder care for his mother, Victor has devised an ingenious scam. He pretends to choke on pieces of food while dining in upscale restaurants. He then allows himself to be saved by fellow patrons who, feeling responsible for Victor's life, go on to send checks to support him. That is just a very vague gist of this book. And um, this book was also giving to me in the pile that Candy was. And I feel like there's like a little pattern here. But <laughs> I think sometimes the universe brings you what you seek out. But I'm going to see what I've underlined here. Um, she says how the girl traced the outline of her lover's shadow so she would always have a record of how he looked a document of this exact moment the last moment they would be together the next day the girl's lover was gone but a shadow was still here it's that old Chinese custom where if somebody saves your life they're responsible for you forever I would recommend reading this book. Uh, there is no way you can get the past right. You can pretend, you can delude yourself, but you can recreate what's over. I am tracing a little bit of a theme here, guys. Um, <laughs> it's just the point in my life, I guess. They already said that, but... I would suggest everybody read these books if they feel so inclined. I mean, yeah, books can be sad, but so can life, so can art, so can movies. And I, I think all of these books just do something to your thoughts and your emotions. And um, I would recommend them. And the last book. Dear Christine, by the way, these Stephen King books look like that because they were my dad's from the 80s and he gifted them to me like a big box of Stephen King books and I think they're like my most prized possessions. Um, I mean, they're quite old for books, you know. Um, okay, Christine is no lady. But 70-year-old Arnie Cunningham loves her enough to do anything to possess her. Arnie's best friend Dennis distrusts her at first sight. Arnie's teen queen girlfriend Leah fears her with the moment she senses her power. Arnie's parents, teachers, and enemies soon learn what happens when you cross her. Christine is no lady. She is Stephen King's ultimate blackly evil vehicle of horror. Oh my god, these descriptions are so 80s. <laughs> so, if you haven't figured it out by now, Christine, or if you don't know, Christine is a book about a car, a seemingly innocent object, just like Cujo, a seemingly innocent dog. Everything starts so simple. But eventually, it turns out this um, car possesses some sort of power, if one could put it that way. Um, and it's just sort of completely envelops its owner um, and demands precedence in their life. It's really hard to describe things without spoiling them. But anyway, um, 
things take a take a turn for the worse at some point eventually, right? And things are just not okay. Um, I would definitely recommend this book. I would recommend these books, like I said, with Stephen King particularly. It's just you just have to read one of his books at any point, you know, because it is such a classic, it's such a staple. He drove back down to our town slowly, and Christine managed the twisting, steeply descending road with easy, stirred footedness. The sprinkle of earth stars that was Libertyville and Morinville grew larger and drew closer together and then ceased to have any pattern at all. Lee watched this a little sadly, feeling that the best part of a potentially wonderful evening had somehow slipped away. She felt irritated, chafed, out of sorts with herself, unfulfilled, she supposed. Anyway, those were a few of my favorite books or books that I really enjoyed in the past. Hope that you liked this video and that you found it relaxing. If you read any of them or know any of them, please let me know. I would love to talk about them with you. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next